this video, I'm going to show you how to create this tooltip hover effect using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the page, I have the head element with a link to a font family that I'm going to use. And then beneath that, I have some CSS. In the CSS, I have some root variables already declared, and then I have the box sizing set to border box. I'm going to show you this full tutorial from beginning to end. So first I'm going to write all of the HTML for the project, and then I will style it and add hover effects using CSS. So the HTML for this project is pretty simple. I'm going to add an H1 element, which will be the only element on the page. And then I will add a tag of data tooltip. So the content that I'm going to put in this data tooltip will be the information that will actually be in the tooltip when the user hovers over the H1 element. So I want this to behave like a translator where the word that we see on the page is chow, but when the user hovers over it, they can see the translation for that in English, which means hello and goodbye. So I'm going to reveal this content when the user hovers over this word. So this is actually the only HTML that we need for the project and everything else will be completed within the CSS. So first to get started within the CSS, I'm just going to declare some basic styling for the body. So I'm going to set the font family to Montserrat. I'm going to set the height to 100% of the viewport height. I'm going to set the display of this to grid. And then I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So I'll link that video in the description below. And finally, I'm just going to modify the background color to a light gray. Next, I'm going to improve the styling of the H1 element. So first I want to increase the font size of this. So I'm going to set a 272. I'm going to set the position of this to relative. And I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. So that way it actually looks interactive when the user is over it. So then to add a bit of styling, I'm going to add an underline. And I'm going to set the decoration style to dotted. And then I'm going to set the decoration color to a variable that I already declared. So it becomes this cool greenish color. Next, I'm just going to add a little bit of a hover effect for that H1 element. So I'm just going to change the color of this to another variable that I already declared. So now if the user were to go over that word, you could actually see that it changes color. Next, I'm going to work on the actual tooltip. So the tooltip will be a before pseudo element that we will add different properties to. So when the user is actually over the element, it will look like it's animating. So to get started with that, first I'm going to refer to the H1 element and add a before property to it. And for the content for this before element, I want it to be the information that's in this data tooltip. So I'm going to refer to the content tag and set it to an attribute, which is the information that's in the data tooltip tag. So the way that you represent that is by writing content and then referring to the attribute ATTR and then putting in the name of the tag that you want to reference. So we can see that automatically the information that's in the tooltip goes right before the H1 element. So we can see that it is being presented on the page, but it doesn't have the treatment that we want yet. For this element, I'm going to set the position of this to absolute. So now we can see that it actually overlaps the H1 element. Then I'm going to modify its font size and color. And I'm going to set a background color for this. I'll set it to white. I want there to be a bit of padding with the tooltip and I'm also going to add a border radius. Then I'm also going to add a box shadow for this as well and set it to a slightly darker gray. Now this tooltip looks like it's definitely coming together, but the position of it isn't that good because it's directly above the H1 element. So I'm going to modify its left position and top position. 
And if you're wondering how I got these numbers, I had to do a little bit of tweaking to get it to be placed where I would want it to be on the page. So sometimes it just has to do with a little bit of experimentation. Now, something to keep in mind is that this is how the tooltip will look before the user actually hovers over it. So I actually want there to be some kind of animation or transition between the two states. So before the user hovers over the word chow, I want this tooltip to be placed in a certain position. And then when the user is over it, I want it to move to a different position. That way it will look like it's actually animating. So these properties will be applied before the user actually hovers over the word. So I'm actually going to add a different property next. I'm going to add a clip path that has a circle property. And that's because I want it to have a pop effect. So I'm going to add a clip path and I'm going to set this to circle. And initially I want to set it to zero REM because I don't want you to see the tooltip at all. So I'm going to make it zero REM at the center. So this is the initial state. And just to make sure that we definitely don't see anything, I'm also going to set the overflow to hidden. So now when we hover over it, we don't see the tooltip at all because we didn't add the hover effect property yet. So beneath this work, I'm going to add the H1 hover effect for the before property. So this is basically saying when that H1 element is in the hover state, I want these properties to be applied to the before element. So what do I want to change when this element has a hover state? Well, I want to change the clip path because I don't want it to be zero. I want it to expand to its full size. So I'm going to set the clip path to this to circle 20 REM at the center. So that will expand that circle mask that we saw. So now when I hover over it, we actually see the full element. Now we don't see the animation because we didn't apply a transition yet, but as you can see, it goes from zero REM to 20 REM. I'm also going to modify the position of the top element. Right now, these two things are too close to one another and I want it to look like it's animating upwards. So I'm going to add a top position property of negative 130%. So now when I hover over it, it looks a little bit higher. So now we can actually see the end state, but there doesn't appear to be any kind of animation or transition between the two states. I'm actually going to add a transition property of 300 milliseconds with an ease in. So now if I hover over it, I'm expecting to see that tooltip animate. So I hover over it and it actually animates. So as you can see, it not only animates by expanding, but there's also a translation in the Y direction. And that's because I modified that top positioning. So there you go. That's all you have to do to add tooltips to your project. So just to review what I did, first I created an H1 element in the HTML. And for that H1 element, I included a tag called data tooltip. And in that data tooltip, I included a string that I wanted to show on the screen when the user was hovering over that H1 element. So for that data tooltip tag, that's where I placed the content that I wanted to be visible on the screen. Then within the CSS, I declared some basic properties and applied styling for the H1 element. And then in order to create the tooltip, I added a before pseudo element that had a content tag of the attribute that was in that data tooltip. So that way that information from that data tooltip tag would actually be visible on the page. From there, I modified its position property, its size, and some other characteristics. And I also included a clip path of circle set at zero REM at the center. So that way, initially you would not see the tooltip at all, but when the user hovers over that element, I changed the clip path and the top positioning. So that way it actually looks like it's animating. So there you go. That's how I created this tooltip using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.